Hey, I'm ZenSH Plays. Welcome back to a fully operational San Bernardino Zoo. Yes, today we are finally building the entrance itself. Now, we have a problem to solve today. This side of the entrance at the front needs to be a modern, high budget, American style zoo entrance that announces the zoo's presence. And then on the other side here, we need something that's going to act as a suitable backdrop to the water terraces that we built in episodes two and three. So designing a building where each side has two completely different architectural styles would, I imagine, be a struggle uh, for the finest of architects. And uh, I am not the finest of architects. So what I've decided to do is have this side be an old preserved part of the zoo and then have the new building behind it. I want this to be a really nice backdrop for the water terraces. So the style I've decided to go for is called a Spanish colonial revivalist. <laughs> bit of a mouthful. Basically it's a style you see a lot of in California where the zoo is set. Essentially it's the style of buildings that the Spanish used when they colonized the Americas. That style um, was then revived in the early 20th century mainly in California and it's a really attractive style. I thought it'd be a really nice backdrop to these water terraces especially with the sort of more pastel colors that we've got going on there. So I'm going to build a really simple set of arches and the idea would be that this would have been a whole building at one time back in the early days of the zoo. Um, recently the zoo has replaced it with a more modern entrance building but just left these arches in so that it still serves as a nice backdrop for the water terraces. So I'm using plaster pieces and a few of the classic pieces to create some arches. Um, ignore that little roof thing, that was an experiment that doesn't, uh, that doesn't stay in there but just copying these all the way down and just trying to work out how to have something that's just a part of the building still look like it belongs there. So this entire build <laughs> took an enormous amount of time. I can't even remember how much footage I had. I think I had like 20 hours of footage to edit <laughs> to make this episode because there's just none of it's that complicated but I just had two really different ideas about how I wanted each side to look and trying to get those to match together was pretty tricky. I'm just putting bins inside the columns here um, to stop guests from walking through the columns. Much easier than using guest barriers if you've just got a little space like this and this will just make it look realistic and make them walk between the columns instead of straight through them like they normally would. And then we're going to put a huge billboard in here. We're doing a lot of stuff with billboards in this episode. I'm really enjoying using them after we started using them in the Crane's Habitat last week. Um, so I'll get a bit more into it later on when we build the lifts for the guests to get up into this area. But um, right now we're just gonna put a big old billboard here um, to go in the arches. So it looks like a design that you'd often see in zoos. Um, this is based on a thumbnail for one of the episodes of Planet Wild. Um, I'll put a link to it in the end if you want to see the episode. It's one of my favourite videos that I've ever made, I think. Um, a sort of compilation of the best animal footage from the Planet Wild series. And then we're going to take these arches and curve them round the path that leads people down into the next area of the zoo. So it's not just a, a sort of straight line. And we'll fill this big hole in with a garden for palms later on. And I'm going to end it roughly about here, maybe put another archway in um, and put a slightly thicker arch on the end and some more decoration just to signify that that is the end of the arches. And yeah, this Spanish style I think fits really nicely in with the water terraces. Really happy with how this looks when it's done. It just took me a long time to get there despite how simple the actual build is. So we'll come back and do a bit more work on this end piece here in a second. But it's looking a little monotonous colour wise and I want to add a splash of colour to it. So I'm going to take the flags that we created for the water terrace and then arrange them so that we've got one on every other column along here to give a splash of colour. Um, we'll make some changes to the actual sort of structure of it as well so that they look like they're hanging rather than just a, a post that's been stuck to the wall. So we'll move these bracket pieces in and they can be the supports for the flag so it's hanging from the top rather than on a pole. And then we'll copy these across and just get them in the right position and it looks a lot better once we get these in here. We're going to have all sorts of decals and lights and stuff like that on here as well um, to really bring it to life. 
and we'll put another billboard on this end uh, this time with an image of the water terraces i think eventually i want to have billboards all over the zoo of the animals in the zoo but obviously right now <laughs> we've only got two habitats so we're going to be using whatever i can find lying around and while i finish that off some exciting news from the zoo we have our second zoo baby and i want you guys to name her so we have our little crane chick here Think of a name, put it in the comments, and I will choose my favorite, and that will be this little crane's name going forward. Next up, we're gonna move on to part two of the build, which is to get the lifts working. So these plaster pieces mark the exact point where the guests are gonna to come to the end of the spiral staircase and step into the actual entrance. So they're gonna be replaced with lifts, and then we're gonna build an entire wall across them made from billboards, which is gonna enable us to have a really cool design on it and it looked like something you see a lot of in zoos where you've got big animal murals on the wall and things like that rather than building it out of building pieces so we're going to use a lot of billboards and we're going to need a lot of um, work in photoshop to get the pictures to be in the right place um, and we also need to position the billboards so that they're not covering the gap where the guests are going to walk through because we want the lifts to have open doors so that you can actually see the guests walk in. So it's going to take a lot of doing. So this is me just rearranging the pictures again and again in Photoshop so that when I export them and add them to the billboard, their heads appear exactly where I want them to, like this little raccoon here. I'm glossing over this pretty quickly, but if you want to know exactly how to do stuff like this over multiple billboards, let me know in the comments and I might make a tutorial on it. Next up, we're going to finish off the rest of the building with some of these metal wall pieces. Um, we'll build a roof as well. Um, obviously, we want this completely covered up. Um, a, you sort of need lift shafts to be covered up. And B, we don't want to see the guests walking up these spiral stairs. They're going to walk into the open lift doors at the bottom and then emerge at the top. Um, and it should look pretty smooth. We'll use some of the panel pieces here that come with this building set to get the wall to go all the way up to the back wall of the building without sticking out. And then we'll put a roof in, keeping this pretty simple. Uh, it is a set of lifts after all, and what the guests will see will be the big billboards on both sides of it. And then we'll use these plaster pieces to cover up the edges of the building and bring a continuity with the main building itself. Now onto the lifts themselves. So I mentioned back in episode one, I think it was, whether I would build the lifts myself or use Shifty's lift pack. And I decided to go with Shifty's lift pack. It is so good. It is insane how detailed they are. Probably better than anything I could do and certainly quicker than anything I could do. But they're gonna need quite a lot of transformation to get them to fit. So we've dropped the blueprint in and I'm gonna split it up into its component parts and start resizing them so that it exactly fits the gaps in the billboard that we put in earlier. And when this is finished, it just looks so slick. Massive thank you to Shifty for creating this pack. He's an amazing creator. If you've not checked out his channel, I'd recommend it. He builds some amazing stuff. He's a big fan of zoo entrances, uh, as am I. And speaking of the entrance, it is finally time to get on and start building the facade at the front of the entrance. Oh, I have been looking forward to making this. So one of the main things that I wanna have in the entrance is the zoo's logo. And as you probably noticed at the start of the videos, the zoo's logo is written in the Planet Zoo fonts, or as close as I could get to the Planet Zoo font anyway. And that is not a font that we have in the game. So I'm gonna to need to use billboards again to get the logo to appear on the front of the building and look uh, exactly as I want it to. So we're using some massive billboards here, and then we're gonna build the entrance over them and just leave a little gap where you can see the logo through it. This, again, a lot of time in Photoshop to get it to fit exactly over this billboard and be the right size for the building. But we'll just position these billboards in the center and then we'll put the logo in. This, at this stage, this is just a really rough uh, version of the logo. It's not even the right color. Um, I'm just getting the sizing right. And by the end of the episode, this will be all the correct colors and the perfect size. But I need something to work with. Um, and then we're gonna sit the logo in. I don't want it to just look like an actual billboard that's just been stuck to the side of the building, if you see what I mean. So we're gonna sit it in and actually build it as part of the entrance facade. And part of that building will be some windows to get some light in there and just for some visual interest on the front. So I'm making a nice circle here and we're gonna have a couple of these on the front of the building so that we can, like I say, get some light and some visual interest. So gonna copy this, get it in the right position on the front of the building 
We're gonna have two of them intersecting and then put glass inside them and it will highlight that end of the building, which is where we're gonna have our entrance animals. The logo itself is gonna have a concrete surround, which is gonna help separate it from the rest of the design. So I need a couple of half circles for each end of that. So I'm gonna build an even smaller circle and I'm using the other end of the plaster pieces from what we had before. So the um, each piece of the circle is even smaller, which gives you a nice smooth circle. The smaller the piece, obviously, the smoother the circle. And then we'll just use half of this and copy it up onto the facade of the building and then run lines of concrete in between each half circle until we've got a really nice smooth surround for the logo. I'm using the non-lit version of the billboards, but they are still pretty reflective, which is a bit much sometimes, but I really want the logo to be correct. Uh, so billboards are the only way to go, other than designing my own version of the Planet Zoo font out of bracket pieces, and I do not have a spare month to <laughs> put one of those together. So um, this is what we're gonna go with, and once it's got everything surrounding it as it should do, it looks really good. So we're gonna run those plaster pieces along here, like I said, and then just get a sort of a rounded uh, rectangle, I guess you'd call it, or a really weird oval. I'm not sure what the technical term is, but we'll get this all the way around the logo. That's gonna help it stand out with what's surrounding it. There we go, looking good. Now, in terms of what's gonna surround it, I had a couple of ideas for what I wanted the front of the entrance to look like. And just to sort of show you how long these things can take, I'm gonna show you my first idea which I spent absolutely hours on. So I decided that what I wanted at the front was a mosaic. So I got a picture of a tiger and I shrunk it down to the correct number of pixels. And then I individually <laughs> recolored each one of these little pieces to build the complete mosaic of the tiger. And then when I'd finished, I hated it. So I deleted it and went with my other idea, which was to replicate the animal wall that we built in the last episode across the whole of the facade. This took a lot of doing because there's only so many of the faux rocks that I used to recreate that. And I really don't want this to look like it's being copy pasted. Uh, obviously IRL, um, that's not an option. So you can see here, there's loads of repeating patterns where I've used the same rock over and again so i want to get rid of all of those so we're going to use loads and loads of the small faux rocks to cover up any repeating patterns so it makes it look like it's been sort of properly carved out of you know poured concrete or whatever they use to make this effect and uh, we also need to get the joins between this part of the wall and the concrete surround of the logo really tight so that that looks like it's been built into it as well so lots of work to do here. We're also gonna put some glass in the windows, obviously. These windows are gonna provide a tiny bit of a view into the final piece of the entrance puzzle, which is gonna be a big exhibit for both species of iguanas, which we are gonna be doing next week when we finally finish the whole entrance complex and can start getting into the rest of the zoo. So I'm gonna use billboards again down here. I went through a few different options here, but for the moment, I'm gonna use a modified version of the same billboard that we used on the lifts. I think it's really nice. Uh, I think eventually I will change it out for animals from the zoo itself. I mean, these species will be in the zoo, I think, but um, I want the pictures to have been taken in the zoo. I really like how this is looking, but it is very gray. So I want a splash of color in here as well. So we're gonna add some planters in. I wasn't sure exactly how you'd get plants onto a sort of giant fake rock wall. So I spoke to one of the uh, the legends of Planet Zoo, Mike Sheets, who is um, a gardener by trade or a landscape gardener, I think, or something like that. This guy knows more about plants than uh, anyone I've ever spoken to. And he gave me some advice on how you would get plants in here, either fake ones or just building planters like this on the side. As long as you've got a foot or two of soil there, you can put some plants in there and we'll get some trailing plants coming down from here, reaching over the facade. So we get a nice green, contrast to all the gray that's going on beneath it and once these are finished all we need is a roof and the exterior of the entrance is done so you'll see the roof in the cinematics in a minute um, it's not 100 percent finished yet i ran out of time you're going to see sort of a rough draft of it it's going to be much more attractive when it's finally finished but i left it in there so you get a sense of what the the final building is going to look like so let's check it out i'm really happy with that 
The photo montage really looks like something you would see in a zoo. I think that's turned out really nicely. The Shifty's lifts look amazing in there. This is the finished Spanish Revivalist arches at the water terrace side of the building. I also finished the overlook as well, so the guests aren't going to plummet to their deaths anymore, which is always useful. And here you see the view of it in the background. And I think that's a really fitting backdrop for this area. Very happy with how that finishes it off. And here is the front in all its glory. Really pleased with how the animals are spread over the whole entrance. And I love the fact that we've got the proper logo on the building as well. I'm glad we went with the billboard in the end. I think it's really effective. Let's check the drone cam as always. This is where we were at the start of the episode. And this is where we are now. That's the temporary roof I mentioned. Next week, we're going to be building a big exhibit for iguanas and finishing off the end of the building. And that will be the entrance completely finished. Thank you so much for watching as always. And I'll see you next week for the next episode of San Bernardino Zoo. See you then.